Yes, guys, guys, listen. Before we get any further, go to numbers 2319 and Hosea 11 9, right? Read it to yourselves and then on what he's saying, so that fits emotionally in your heart with what God says and what this man's saying. Right. And I think we're all. You're a pagan. You are, you're a pagan. Adam, just you're a pagan. Him. If he's, if he's, 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 if he's just going to speak God. over me, just mute him whilst I'm, whilst I'm going to explain. He goes to Numbers 2319 where it says, I, I'm not a man. We know that Jesus took on flesh when he came to the earth. John 1.14. Yeah. And then the word took on flesh. Yeah. Numbers is within the Old Testament, of Amen. course. Jesus but if we go to Genesis 5.2, he can't comprehend that male and female, he created them and he blessed them and named them man when they were created. Adam and Eve are two persons, yet here God is saying that they are one. For example, a father is the head of a family he doesn't, and he's the head of a son. doesn't necessarily mean that that son is more uh, prominent in essence or worthiness. It just means that they, he's the head. It doesn't, it, it just, it doesn't show anything, Jacob. Well, listen, let's, let's break this guy down easily, yeah, right, guys. Yeah. One question, can God die? One question that just, just blows right water. Can God die? Death. Jacob, no, death. Can God die? Answer it. See, coward's got to run. Coward's got to run. He's I'm, caught, not I'm not running. I'm not running. Can God die? I'm not running. I'm trying to understand what... Define death, Jacob. Define death. By dying, inherently your body dies. Can God die? Your body dies. Yeah. Right. So what happens Can to God... your soul? What happens to your soul? Can... Does it live on? What do you mean? No, it doesn't live on. Not until Judgment Day, Resurrection. <laughs> you know that. Resurrection. Well, what happens? Is that resurrection. So... We are all. So again, your scripture is wrong, right? So secondly, right, he didn't answer, can God die, right? Because we know God can't, right? Yet God, so if we look at John, where he was quoting John 1, where he goes, the word became flesh. Well, if the word became flesh and God became a man, the flesh died at the cross. Either he died or he didn't, and it's all a lie. So now you have an inherent issue because now you have to admit God died, which blows you out of the war, or you have to admit it was a lie and God never died. There is okay, a truth. Let, you... let me respond. Right. So Jacob, again, in his very basic understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity, goes to show that he really needs to read a book here and there. When God died, he died in the flesh, as it says in 1 Peter 5. God, in essence, does not die. He does not die in his divinity. He dies in the flesh. By his definition of death, it is ceased to exist. This is an atheistic point of view of the meaning of death christians muslims so on and so forth do not believe that when you die your soul ceases to exist this is not what we believe when jesus died on the cross he died in his flesh and he lives on forever and ever he conquered death as well so by bringing well, up numbers 23 19 bro you're just talking about the old testament where we don't believe that jesus took the flesh at that stage my friend, my pagan friend, you still haven't even answered the question yet, have you? You've ran around saying a load of words, but you've not answered it. You say to go take a book, right? But what do you mean God can't die in essence, right? If you die where it says the word became flesh, and flesh can die, so he did die, right? Let's not beat around the bush. Jesus died, right? So we know Jesus isn't God because who? what does he say? Who resurrected him? And how does he say he does everything? What does he say? You're going against Jesus by saying, well... He doesn't say God give you authority or all things through him comes from the Father. So he can't do nothing without the Father. So the Father raised Jesus, not Jesus, Klein. That's number one. Number one. Number two, go use a toothbrush because it might help you with your verbal diarrhea. Thirdly, thirdly, right, you, you go against God. That's on you. You change God's words. And anybody listening, remember what God says in the Tanakh. He says, neither add or subtract to my word. This this pagan, this pagan guy. Deuteronomy 4.2. Right? I'll help you out, mate. Deuteronomy 4.2. This pagan guy who cannot use a toothbrush, right? He's never heard of Colgate, right? He's just chatting. All right, chatting. now he's just insulting. Just mute him. You notice how throughout that whole thing, he didn't, didn't have anything. Like there was no no strength within what he said are you going to even make a point Jacob or are you just going to start barking like a dog that you are 
to you could call me a dog, but Jesus called you a dog. So you could call me a dog all you want. Jesus called you a dog. Uh, did he? Or is the word pet? Is it an endearing term? Pet, puppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just listen. You have two different words. You have one called pet, which is affectionate. It's like a little small puppy. And you have one called dog, which is derogatory. In the Hebrew, they're, they're separated in the words. Did you know that? Well, in the Hebrew, it says Kalev. Now, what does Kalev mean? Dog. It doesn't mean pet. Kalev. Go look it up quickly. Kalev means no, dog. It, doesn't. it means pet. No. It means pet. No. It means puppy. It means puppy. You're meant to be a Jew. You're meant to be a Jew. I'm a Jew. Kalev. Look up the word Kalev. Look up the word Kalev. Bring it up now. Bring it up now. You, I'm a Jew. Are you reading? 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 Um, idolizes Jesus and perverts him and changes his meaning and what he actually does. You're, you're an Anglican right, man. Look at go to John. Look at mute, 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 mute. Come on, mute. He's not saying anything. It's Let's so, go back to John. It's so bad. I know. Let's just go back to John five twenty two. Yeah. John five twenty two. Let's see if he actually has got the dangly balls that he says he's got. If we go to John five twenty two, moreover the Father judges no one, but he has entrusted all judgment to the Son that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. We go to John 5, 27. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Again, Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So we know that Jesus is coming to judge, right? This is not but Hang on, hang on. What you've just done is either you're nuts and you're not listening to yourself. Why is he saying the Father and the Son? Why are they two distinct beings? Why does he not just say himself? If he was God, why did he not just say himself, my friend? Why is it always proven, this? You're literally proving the Trinity and you don't even realise it. He's false, my friend. Mate. Go listen. Go put that pagan stuff somewhere else. Go put that because Jesus was a Jew. He wasn't you like you, a pagan, an Anglican man, was he? Was he? He was a Middle Eastern man, wasn't he? Who taught that there was only one God. Right, okay, so he's he just rambling again. So I've, I've just proved, proved that he's a rambler. Um, Revelations 22, verse 20. We know that this is talking about Jesus in Revelations 22 because it says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelations 22, 12. It says, See, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. And verse 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning of the end. So, as I'm a so-called pagan, Jacob, can you explain to me why Jesus is claiming to have full divinity as the first and the last, the beginning of the end, and the yeah, Alpha and the Omega? Give this one final comment and i got to go, right? First off, he, he mentioned it, guys. Remember, rewind this back even five minutes, right? He mentioned the distinction between God and Jesus himself. Right? Firstly, firstly, then he even quoted... Not the Father. Not the Father. Remember, he quoted that he was given authority. That's how stupid he is. He quoted a verse that helps me because God has given him authority. So he becomes the, 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 the king. He becomes our king, right? That's what he does. He becomes the king, right? So therefore, he gets the authority. So, of course, he's the first and last because that's who he is. But, again, he's not God. Where does he say he's God? Tell me where he says I'm God. Tell me one verse where he goes, I am God. What's, what's before the, what's before, um, the beginning? What do you mean? What is before? What is before the beginning? Well, some Jews say oh, before the beginning. What do you mean, the creation of Earth, or what? Well, you'd have to be specific. The definition of the word beginning. What is before the beginning? It's not a trick question. Well, what's that? That would be right. There would be nothing before the beginning. Right. So what's before the end? What's after the end? Sorry. Nothing, right? Right. So when Jesus says, I am the beginning and the end, he is saying mm -hmm. that he is be before existence. It's as simple as that. So I get, I understand you accept him as being pre-existent and all this, but again, if you look at, like, if you look, go to a Jew, go to a rabbi and say, in the beginning, when you even say the first four letters, four, first four words in Hebrew, right? You Then you type it in and go, look it up on the internet, right? There's things called Mishnah and Talmud that talk about before a beginning. So Talmud. then you'll have to look at all Here. Did you, just bring, did you just bring in Talmud here? 
Why wouldn't you? Because they're the, they're, the, the Babylonian Talmud precedes Jesus. You do understand that. It was before Jesus, Jews, right? Did Jews not believe in, in the word of God before, before Jesus took on flesh? Do they not believe that the word of God is a thing within the Old Testament? Of course they believe. Okay, so they believe in everything about Jesus up until John 1, 14, where he took on flesh. What do you mean? Hang on, hang on. The Jews, who are you referring to? So in, in the Old Testament, when there's yeah. multiple uh, visions of Jesus, actually, no, I'm not even going to, not even going to, I'm, I'm going to stick to this scripture here because you've still not addressed the point. Why is Jesus saying he is the Alpha or the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last? For for us, for you, maybe for you. The point is, he was given authority. That's what I'd refer back to. But so again, was, I could he, be wrong. So he was given authority to be God. So to be the ruler of the world, yeah, to be the real God. So then, but again, not, that's, not what, the, that's not what it is. That's not what it says. Like, it's called that's God. Not it's it not Moses. Says. Two, two, two seconds, guys. Jacob, do you not want to shout into your, your phone because it's distorting? Is Moses called a God? Is Moses referred to as God? Show me the verse. Have you, do, do you know this or not? Is Moses ever referred to as God? I'm going to embarrass you because you don't know the verse and you're saying that Moses was called a God. Without going to the, the prophet Google, what is the verse? Well, I'm asking you. I don't know the exact verse, but I'm sure Moses is called God. So what, embarrass me. In what way was Moses called God? A God. Be a God. A God. So you're the pagan. So, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> on. You're an idiot. I'm just so... Hang on a second. You've got, you've got a a God, and then you've got Moses. That's two gods. Let me no, it's not, no, because what is a god? What is a god? Just the ruler, you twat. Bingo, you fucking idiot. You're an idiot. So, so Yahweh is just a ruler. He's nothing, else. He's nothing else but a ruler. Yeah. Oh, he disappeared. Apparently, Yahweh is, not, Yahweh is nothing else but a ruler, apparently. I thought, according to according to Jacob, after this, he's going to go around and tell everyone that you beat him. He, yeah, he will, he will. So deluded, it's scary. Yeah, it's, so, it's scary. 